In the 2024 U.S. presidential election, more A-list Hollywood celebrities are opening fire on Donald Trump. Robert De Niro, the award-winning actor and producer, was not political for most of his career, but Donald Trump changed that. De Niro has been sparring publicly with Trump for a few years now, and in a recent MSNBC interview, De Niro gave his harshest assessment of Trump to date and said the stakes in this election are bigger and simpler than the status of our democracy. Democracy is, is, is great, of course, but democracy people take for granted. It's a word that some people don't even understand. They take it for granted. It's about right and wrong, period. The guy's a monster. It's beyond wrong. It's almost like he wants to do the most horrible things that he can think of in order to get a rise out of us. I don't know what it is, but he's been doing it and doing it, and it's scary. Are you Excuse my French. You are excused. A lot of Americans find Trump especially scary. De Niro said he always thought our American system and values would keep somebody like Donald Trump from rising to power. He's sick. He is really, genuinely a sick person that somehow has been allowed into our system. He actually became president. He could have done good things. Instead, he just, he had to do it all wrong. He, he, he just, he's so, as we all know, so narcissistic and self-centered. De Niro's scathing attacks on Donald Trump have now brought billionaire Elon Musk into this fight. On social media, Musk described De Niro as disgusting, and that's rich coming from Elon Musk, who most recently announced that white nationalist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes is being reinstated on Musk's ex. Anyway, back to Trump, who hosted Fuentes for dinner at Mar-a-Lago two years ago. Trump is now being blasted by actor Jeff Daniels. Daniels is from the Midwest and still calls Michigan home, and he believes that much of what the media and political elites describe as flyover country will see through Donald Trump in November and will vote for decency and honesty. We live in the Midwest. We don't necessarily take New York and L.A. as seriously as New York and L.A. takes itself. You know, I hate to tell you, okay, we but we're, we're flyover country and we're always we got a chip on our shoulder about that. And we get we're not as stupid as as people like Trump in particular think we are. He talks down to us. He talks past us. He talk, he lies to us and we get it. And it's really not the people on the right. They're going to they're gonna stay there. You know, okay, terrific. Class or no class, they're going to stay there. The left's going to stay on the left. It's that 20%, 15% in the middle, the Reagan Democrats, the moderate Republicans who are going, I'm over Trump, maybe Nikki Haley. I'm over, okay, dissent, okay, uh, get me somebody. But basically, I think even the middle of the country, even Michigan, is watching the Republican Party destroy itself. Daniel said he sees two wars playing out politically right now in the United States, the war within the Republican Party and the broader war over democracy. And he said the latter, the war over democracy and what it means in America is unavoidable. It's on the internet, it's on social media, it's on people not listening anymore, but that war is gonna culminate in November. And I think that's when the voters, and I would be, I'm cautiously optimistic that the people in the middle, the people in states like Michigan, are going to go, you know what, we're better than this. I'm going to vote for Biden, even though he's old, which also translates into wise and wisdom, which we may need right now, because the election that I really want to vote on is the one in 2028, when people are now running with a future. All those folks. Daniel's political analysis is spot on in my view. The 2024 battle and the contrast come down to Biden's stability and belief in democratic government institutions versus Trump's instability and desire to burn everything down. Yes, there are other contrasts like Biden's foreign policy engagement versus Trump's isolationism in America first. But at its core, this 2024 election is about what kind of democracy, what kind of stability America will have. And given the age of both candidates, Daniels is correct that a more future-oriented campaign will not come until 2028. Still, the contours of all future elections will be shared by the results of this one. And even if Hollywood celebrities like Jeff Daniels and Robert De Niro only influence a few voters here and there, in a close election, every vote matters. And America's highest profile Hollywood stars, many of whom have long shunned politics, are weighing in and declaring that 2024 matters the most. Indeed. By the way, MAGA Christian extremists who are at the core of Donald Trump's support are often surprised and bewildered to learn that Trump has Jewish family members. Do you think the Bible should be taught in public schools? Yeah. 
I, I mean, why not? We have a separation of church and state. You know, it might be to some people, but not to me. If the country is one nation under God, it should be one nation under one God. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Yes. So what would that do for Donald Trump's Jewish children who don't worship the same God? But don't they it's still? I mean, it's still the same God. They just don't worship Christianity. Well, they don't worship Jesus. Right, right. Isn't so, Jesus the God of Christianity? Well, he, he is. He's three in one. Check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.